The rice that farmers work hard to grow may sell for only a dollar or two per pound on the market, but they can't keep a portion of it to stick as seeds. Can only go buy rice seeds that cost 50 yuan per gin. In the early days, the US Department of Agriculture and Cotton Company developed a technology to deliberately mature the plant after modifying its genes. In other words, the technology makes the seeds you grow from your crops unable to grow into new crops. Then Monsanto realized, hey, if I mastered this technology, wouldn't I be able to monopolize the entire seed industry? So Monsanto quietly bought up this Anno company along with this technology. So the question arises, even if Monsanto wanted to popularize this technology, what if farmers didn't initially buy their genetically modified seeds? Our country is the world's number one food importer. 80% of the food imported each year is primarily soybeans from Brazil and the United States. And these soybeans are basically all genetically modified. Whether they're from Brazil or the US, their seeds mostly come from Monsanto. Like genetically modified soybeans have many advantages over ordinary soybeans, such as high yield, full grains, resistance to pests, etc. Of course, whether it is safe or not is not within our discussion today. So if you're a farmer and you don't use Monsanto's genetically modified seeds, your soybean yield and appearance are not as good as others. The money you make is naturally not as much as others, causing you to have to use their seeds. If Monsanto had used sterilization technology on the seeds at this time, you might have to always buy seeds from them. You can't keep the seeds. Natural pricing power is also in their hands. I know there must be some people who are going to argue at this point, what if I just don't use your genetically modified seeds? Even if the yield is low, I want to use ordinary seeds. Dry grains, also often referred to as concentrates. This type of herbicide has been popular in China for decades, of course. Now, there are other names, but the essence remains the same. The herbicide, such as cow ganlin, is not only cheap, but also very effective. The key is that it's eco-friendly. It's so good. You say, whether you use it or not, the fact is that whether it's China or the USA, both are using this plastic storage on a large scale. But the biggest drawback of this weed killer is that it can kill not only weeds, but also ordinary farmers. And Monsanto's second big move is that if you use their genetically modified seeds to grow crops, it would not be killed by this herbicide. Monsanto's transgenic and herbicides are simply perfect. So at this point, would you still be so adamant and say, oh, I just won't use your seeds and herbicides? The fact is, you not only have to use their seeds, but also their herbicides. This is the result they intentionally achieved after mastering the technology. So do you think this is technically evil? In fact, hybridization and genetic modification are somewhat similar. Both are to concentrate the advantages of different varieties to produce a new variety, such as mules, a hybrid of horses and donkeys, can run fast like horses and also have the endurance of donkeys. The mule combines the horse and donkey for life. That's the advantage of hybridization. Complain. This Act is the spoiled. biggest difference from genetically modified. Turning chest sound. I'm also talking about different frequencies. Chest sound. Forced combination transformation. Hybridization tends towards natural combination. Humans may just have guided it. So hybridization can't achieve the perfect changes. Like GM, it will have some major drawbacks. For example, the shortcomings. The main of issue is that the breeding ability is not good. Can't produce little screws. For instance, oranges are hybrids of tangerines and pomelos. Lemons are also new products of different fruit crosses. You're free. Over the month, no seeds can be kept. Propagation mainly relies on grafting and hybridization. Although hybrid rice can also keep seeds, but cannot stably inherit some good qualities of hybrid rice. For example, the yield of the circulating nucleus will drop. The ability to resist pests and resist will also drop. We won't go into details about Huawei's theoretical knowledge. If you have time, you can flip through a middle school biology textbook. Let's talk about some practical operations. Rice is a kind of hermaphrodite, which means that normal rice is self-pollinating. Hybridization, as the name implies, is a process that requires different varieties of rice to crossbreed, producing a new rice with the advantages of both. This is the result we want. So the first thing we need to do is to prevent them from blaming themselves. Kiss to the pregnant. Because the flowers are big, all we have to do is manually remove one of the varieties of corn. Then only the female pistil is left and the male stamen of another variety is used to impart pollen, thus achieving the purpose of hybridization. It's simple. But with so many rice flowers and so small, even if all 1.4 billion people in the country come to pick up the stamen, it would not be enough. What if it can't do Jim's job? That's when we mentioned the great work of Mr. Yuan Longping and Mr. Shi Ming Song. Fine hair hybrid. This is a very magical kind of rice. Ordinary rice is hermaphroditic. The magic of this rice is, during the summer heat, this kind of rice is just one of them. So he can't self-pollinate at all. At this time, all other varieties of rice only need male stamen. It can crossbreed with it and produce new seeds. When the temperature drops in autumn, this rice becomes a normal hermaphrodite again, and it can reproduce with itself. So at this time, breeding hybrid rice is very simple. In summer, you first prepare two plots of land, A and B. First, you use AD to plant this magical rice. At this time, this rice is female, right? Then use BD to plant other varieties of rice. This rice is hermaphroditic. Finally, let BD, 
Giving the pollen to AD's stove, the stove displayed by AD at this time is a hybrid water. After maturing, it can be sown in autumn and it can crossbreed on its own like normal rice. The main function of BD is to transfer pollen to AD, after which it has a little value. The hybrid you bought is produced by AD. So even though it seems simple, which kind of hybrid rice seeds are better, is the result of long-term extensive experiments. This is also why the seeds of hybrid rice are expensive. Actually, this magical two-line hybridization method was mainly discovered by Mr. Sha Mingsong, and Yuan Longping's early results were mainly three-line hybridization. However, the three-line system has some shortcomings. The later two-line rice system has also solved these shortcomings. Unfortunately, Mr. Tiandu Yingshi Mingsong resigned one year early at the age of 50, died from accidental electrocution during a bath. Yuan Longping later promoted this method and cultivated many varieties and promoted large-scale planting. In the 2014 National Science and Technology Progress Award, Yuan Longping ranked first, Xu Mingsong ranked second. This technology is also promoted in the US through technology transfer and cooperation. Transfer to the world. After all these, what I want to say is that genetically modified organisms can't keep their seeds. This is a result deliberately created by capitalists through technical and legal means. The purpose is to monopolize seeds. Speak clearly is to earn more money from the masses. The key point is that they want to control the world's food through this method. This is the conspiracy behind America and capital. The reason hybrid cannot circulate is the inherent characteristics of biology. After hybridization, only the stability of the first generation genes can be guaranteed, and the inability to keep seeds is also a last resort. Of course, Yuan Longping proposed as early as 1987 that rice hybridization should be divided into three stages, from three-line system to two-line system, and then to one-line system. At present, the most widely used is 210 hybrid and 110 hybrid rice. The ultimate problem to be solved is fix the advantages of hybrids to avoid being a company every year. But at the moment, this technology has not yet been widely used. In the early 1990s, Lester Brown, the director of the World Watch Institute, wrote a book called Who Will Feed China? after investigating and studying China's food. He believes that China will become a country with a large food gap. No one can feed China. Currently, more than 50% of the rice planting area in China is hybrid rice. China's hybrid rice proves that Chinese people can not only feed themselves, but also exports more high-quality rice to other countries to feed more people in the world. Mr. Senator and long-term researchers in the field of hybrid rice are all great and deserve our respect. We should not maliciously speculate with the thoughts of capital evil, thanks to those who are not afraid of difficulties, willing to dedicate and make significant contributions to the food and security of the Chinese people.